Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today, being Asteroid Day, I thought, let's actually do a little history on asteroids. And the history of asteroids actually begins in the 1700s. So, in the 1700s, astronomers were fascinated by a mathematical expression, which was, which was called Bode's Law. Now, it wasn't like a law of physics, it was more an interesting mathematical curiosity about the distances of the planets from the Sun. And it turned out that all the planets followed it, with an odd exception between Mars and Jupiter. In 1781, Sir William Herschel discovered Uranus, and it fit this law as well. So people got really, really interested in that space between Mars and Jupiter, thinking that there had to be a lost planet there. By the end of the 18th century, these uh, astronomers had formed into a group organizing themselves on the search for this lost planet. They called themselves the Celestial Police, but they were to be beaten to the punch by a guy called Giuseppe Piazza, who on the first day of 1801 discovered an object in the gap. He chose the name Ceres Ferdinandia, uh, after Ceres, the Roman goddess of the harvest, and of course, Fer well, and Ferdinandia after the king of uh, Naples and Sicily at the time. Obviously, the second part of the name was later dropped. So uh, the planet was found, everyone was happy, and people stopped looking. And then somebody found another object, called, which was named Pallas. And then somebody found uh, Juno. And another object was found called Vesta. Four objects roughly in the same area. They all were considered to be planets. They were all given uh, zodiacal symbols like other planets. And that was great for about the first 50 years of the 1800s. And then another object was found. This one was, called, was given the name Astrea. And people started to be a little concerned. <laughs> After they found about a dozen of these objects, it was clear they were a different class from the other planets, and so they were quietly downgraded. The name asteroid incidentally becomes, uh, comes from aster for star and oid, so star-like object in space. Um, now, since then, they, you know, since about the 1850s, they continued to find more and more objects. By uh, 1868, they had found about a hundred objects. And in 1873, they found the first asteroid which crossed the orbit of a planet. Uh, orbit, uh, planet number 132, Aethra, it crosses Mars orbit. Now, for most of the first hundred years of asteroids, they were all found by people looking through telescopes with their eyes. But in 1891, Max Wolf discovered the first asteroid using a new technique called astrophotography. It's also not notable that he named this Brucia uh, after a wealthy donor rather than, say, a goddess. You know, once you start discovering hundreds of objects, you start to run out of mythical figures. So they were still mostly naming asteroids after women rather than goddesses, because women's names were in greater supply, I guess. In 1898, Eros was discovered. This was notable because it came pretty close to the Earth. So close, in fact, that in 1900, astronomers around the world mounted an observation campaign to measure the parallax. That is, the difference in viewing angle from one side of the Earth to the other. And this measurement was actually critical in getting an idea of the size of the solar system. In fact, parallax measurements for Eros were considered to be the definitive measure of size in the universe until radar measurements of the distances to the planets finally became possible in the, the 1960s. So by the end of the 1800s, there were about 452 known asteroids. In 1906, an asteroid was found in uh, the Lagrange points near Jupiter. This is a whole class of objects which are called Trojans, and they're named after um, characters from the Trojan Wars. This one was named Achilles. Uh, asteroid 944 Hidalgo was discovered in October 1920, and it was the first centaur, the first object to cross into the outer solar system. Of course, objects in the outer solar system may actually just be quiescent comets. There is a somewhat fuzzy line between asteroids and comets. In 1932, an asteroid was discovered and named Apollo. It was interesting because it was the first asteroid to cross the Earth's orbit. However, 
it was lost soon afterwards because the orbit wasn't properly determined, and would remain lost for almost 40 years until 1973 when it was recovered again. And 1937, again, an asteroid was discovered called Hermes and lost four days later. That wouldn't be recovered again until 2003. Now, obviously, losing asteroids after you've just discovered them was kind of embarrassing, so I guess that might have contributed to the founding of the Minor Planet Center in 1947, which became the authority on the naming and de designation of all these objects. They uh, pick the names, or sorry, they, they assign the numbers, and then they let the discoverers pick the name. And of course, that's why asteroids can have some very interesting names, named after famous actors, rock stars, and so on and so forth. Anyway, asteroids continue to be discovered. Of note, 1566 Icarus was the first asteroid discovered which crossed the orbit of Mercury, coming closer to the Sun than any other planets. But... Through the, up to this point, we still didn't have any good close-up views of asteroids. But in 1991, the Galileo spacecraft, on the way to Jupiter, flew by an asteroid called Gaspara and got the first close-up image of what an asteroid really looked like. And it turns out that the Empire Strikes Back actually did a pretty good job of getting asteroids that looked good. A couple of years later, Galileo flew past an asteroid called Ida, and discovered that it had a moon. That was the first asteroid known to have a moon, and many more have been discovered since then. By the late 1990s, it became clear that there were a lot of asteroids out there waiting to be found. And 1998 brought the foundation of LINEAR, the Lincoln Near-Earth Asteroid Research Project. This was a digital sky survey that was set up specifically to look for asteroids, because Prior to this, asteroids which were found on people's photographic plates, frequently the people taking the, these images hadn't been that interested in making the follow-ups because they were more interested in looking at nebula and that asteroid crossing the frame was ruining their day. But with a digital fast response system, they were able to start discovering thousands and thousands of asteroids. And it would be the fastest discoverer of asteroids until the Catalina Sky Survey came along and eclipsed those numbers. Uh, up to date now, we've got something like 700,000 known objects. And of course, one of my early videos actually plots the discovery rate of asteroids over time. And it is a magnificent watch. Uh, the first spacecraft to actually go into orbit around an asteroid was NEAR, the Near Earth Asteroid Rendezvous, renamed to NEAR Shoemaker, uh, to honour, of course, uh, Eugene Shoemaker, who'd actually uh, unfortunately died in a car crash uh, a few years previously. After the end of the mission, NEAR Shoemaker actually soft landed on the asteroid. It wasn't designed to do this, but it was able to set down, and up that close it was actually able to use its alpha particle uh, spectrometer to measure properties that it hadn't expected to be able to. 2008 brought the last minute discovery of an asteroid. Uh, after its orbit was determined, it was realized that it was gonna hit the surface of the Earth, but a few hours later, over the middle of Africa. Uh, there is a pilot that claims to have seen it, incidentally, and there's been one other object that was discovered, which uh, w was discovered just before impact. But it turns out that in the last uh, 20, 30 years, many asteroids have actually been observed only as they hit the atmosphere, the most spectacular of which was, of course, the object that broke up over Chelyabinsk in 2013. So, yeah, asteroid discovery continues. They are out there, and new techniques continue to happen. Uh, incidentally, and one of the most prolific space discovery spacecraft was the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, which was intended to create a, an infrared sky map of the entire sky, but also happen to find tons and tons of asteroids out there. So while we've discovered 700,000 asteroids, it's important to note that there are still probably millions of objects which haven't been discovered, millions of objects which are substantial enough to cause serious damage if they were to hit the Earth in the wrong place and or the wrong time. And that is what Asteroid Day really means to me. I think that it's important to realise that we as a human race have now reached the point where we can look out into the universe and we can see these threats, we can predict these threats 
And potentially, we can change these and stop them happening. It's the first time that the human race has really hit this level of development where we are able to change our own destiny. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.